So, as you know, the topic of today is uh, wiring. And, uh, you know, in my opinion uh, uh, about uh, the technical uh, the technique we have to apply to our trees uh, to, you know, you know, manipulate them and uh, uh, be able to make them as a bonsai, wiring uh, is absolutely the most uh, important technique. You know, with my travel around the world, uh, I hear many people talking about wiring and also there is a kind of a general fear about uh, wiring, especially when I go on a workshop uh, and, you know, we discuss the tree and we say, okay, uh, this is the tree, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to bend some rights. And then I say to the person, okay, now, you know, start uh, putting the wire on the tree, clockwise, counterclockwise, uh, giving some uh, advice, uh, and the people, sometimes they look at me like uh, terrorized uh, with fear, because, you know, is is a topic uh, I always like to parallel uh, uh, wiring with mathematic. So, as much as you know mathematic rules, uh, everything in mathematic is simple because you just follow the rules uh, and then everything comes uh, out. But obviously, if you don't know the rules uh, and uh, you are in front uh, of a function, you don't know where to start, uh, where to end, how to read uh, the different problems that uh, this function gives to you. So, when, uh, you know, I was a bonsai, normal bonsai practitioner, and I did a lot of workshops with many, you know, national and international bonsai uh, instructors, starting here with my club, with my local club, people said, ah, just put a piece of wire, put a piece of wire here, put a piece of wire there. It was just, uh, you know, doing because you have to do it, but, you know, we, 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 I, I didn't know exactly why, and I didn't know the rules. So when I started going around uh, and giving, uh, you know, lecture and giving demos, uh, and, you know, I feel that something was missing uh, with my communication with people on transmission of my knowledge. I knew how to wire. I remember one year at the club, uh, we booked uh, a beautiful... Uh, one of the, the, the member of the club booked a beautiful five needle pine and this tree was perfectly wired. It came from Japan, came out from the quarantine, the guy bought the tree and the tree had the two parallel low branches. So we said we have to cut one of the two, everything was perfectly wired. We cut the branch and then, you know, kind of as a joke, we hang the, the branch in the, in the workshop. The week after, we came back, uh, we was used to meet uh, every Thursday, and uh, all the leaves uh, from that branch uh, fell. And you can see all the structure of the branch uh, wired, uh, all the primary, secondary branches, all the fine branches, perfectly wired. And I remember, I spent the entire night at the club just uh, staring uh, at this branch because I never ever saw a most perfect branch, perfectly wired, just the right amount of wire, just the perfect gauges, just the perfect aim course. And I said, oh my God, there is a way to wire well and to wire efficiently and not waste the wire and not break branches and not give, uh, you know, a lot of stress to the tree because we was used to just put the wire if the wire was okay, well, if it was not okay, put another wire, then put a tie wire. And, you know, every time you manipulate the branch is a stress. That tree, especially on the first styling, is never experienced to be wired before. Branches are stiff. Once they get wired and positioned, they get a little bit more flexible. But generally, and also according to the different species, most of the branches at the first time they are stiff. So you have to obtain, to get a knowledge and a sensibility to be able to wire properly the tree. So going back to that, I said, I need to write down my rules to be able 
to teach them to people. And uh, like mathematics, if I say that uh, two plus two is four, and is not five one time, and is not seven the other time, is not three the other time, but is always four, is like my wiring. I have to put down rules uh, that my wire always follow those rules. So, when I wrote uh, my bonsai book uh, in 2017, the last chapter of the book uh, was about wiring. And uh, I said, uh, from all the articles uh, about work on the trees and everything, the last one, in my opinion, is the most important one. Because, uh, and this is, I always like to say that, like for a painter using the brush uh, or the sculpture using the chisel, we need to know how to use the wire to be able to manipulate and transmit what is our thought, our idea, our design to the material we are manipulating to become a bonsai one day. So, starting with the rules, I would like to go through all my rules uh, one by one and explain them. Uh, and then uh, we do a little break. If you have any question, you let me know. I will reply the question. And then we go through with some example and we try to get through all uh, the, you know, wiring method and wiring question. So to give you, you know, the, a good uh, understanding about this, uh, what they call wiring science. And then probably this will click uh, something on you and you will look on your wiring differently. And if you need more information, you can always write me, you can always purchase my book, uh, no problem. So let's go, let's go with the first uh, image and let's start uh, this journey through the wiring. So here we are. This is the first uh, important uh, thing we have to know even uh, be before taking the wire in our hand and uh, try to put on the tree. So these uh, are the proportion I like to use, uh, general proportion, when uh, I, you know, apply my wire to the tree. Everyone knows uh, that uh, we can wire with aluminum or we can wire with copper. You see here I have uh, my copper tube and uh, I have my aluminum roll. Why? Because uh, according to the type of work, uh, according to the different uh, variety of tree, I have to switch uh, from one to the other. Generally, conifer, copper, stronger, less gauge, always uh, willing to help uh, in the tough bending. Deciduous tree, aluminium, more gentle, a little bit bigger, but easier to apply, so I don't have to push on the wire too much to be able to apply even on a bigger gauge. So, for the Cidus tree, that, uh, generally talking, maples, uh, carpinos, uh, uh, elms, uh, don't have uh, this uh, thick bark as uh, conifer has, uh, we have uh, to be careful on wiring, because we don't want to pull the wire while uh, we apply and scratch the bark of the tree, because otherwise uh, a little branch uh, or even a medium branch of an deciduous tree it will die because it will dehydrate. Conifer that has bark uh, has a little bit more protection, so even if we, you know, we are a little bit more rougher, they, they, will, they, will, they can afford it. So, you see on that, sketch that I made. That is my uh, ratio proportion between uh, copper and aluminium. So we have the branch uh, and then uh, we have the proportion. So I imagine that uh, when I wire with uh, uh, aluminium wire, my proportion is uh, one to three, the size of the branch uh, to the size of the wire. Because uh, when I wire with copper, I know that copper is stronger. For the same size branch, I can use a smaller gauge of copper. So my proportion is one to four. And you can see on the little sketch that I design three pieces of wire inside of 
you know, the diameter of the branch, and the negative space that the left is my fourth gauge. So, generally talking, for the same size branch, if I have to use this gauge of aluminium, I can go one gauge smaller with uh, copper. Obviously, for what I said, that, that copper is stronger. Then, uh, you know, species-wise, uh, uh, we have always to be able to get this knowledge and uh, understanding that probably when we do a first styling on a tree, we have a little bit to increase our gauge ratio for what I said earlier, that generally branches that were never styled before tend to be a little bit stiff. A quercus is stiffer than a elm. So also according to the species, we have to adjust that ratio. Or for example, when I have to do just a refinement on a very old tree, I just have to use very fine wire, even if that wire is a one to five or one to six, uh, the size of the branch, because in the movement uh, is just very little, so I don't need too much power. But sometimes, when I do heavy bending on a pine, even if it's a conifer, I have sometimes to use the ratio of one to two or one to three, rather than one to four that I said generally, because uh, some areas I have to apply more power. So I need, uh, one good piece of wire. So now that uh, you know, we start understanding which gauges uh, when you know when we approach uh, our tree, which gauges we have to use. Uh, now we go through and we see the next step. Prossimo passo. Here we are. This is another uh, kind of uh, sketch uh, that is actually what I have here. Is uh, a little bit uh, the. Uh, you know, the synthesis uh, of uh, the skeleton of, of a tree, obviously this will go through, is, uh, is a tool I use when I give uh, uh, here in my workshop and uh, on the bonsai school I have all over the world, uh, I give, uh, you know, lecture and I, you know, also make my students, you know, apply the wire and trying the, the correct way to, to wire. I think this tool is very useful because, you know, we have two branches, we have division in branches, and you know, we can always uh, think that this is the base of the tree going up. Uh, we have uh, two branches uh, in two different high, and then up uh, we imagine we have more branches. So as you can see on the sketch uh, on, that you have uh, there, you see those branches. So these will introduce us uh, to how we start wiring the tree. So, generally talking, if we don't need uh, to have uh, a main piece of wire to the main line of the tree, what I always like uh, to say is this. We always wire from uh, the lower branches up and we wire from the inner branches out. We never start on the top of the tree and try to go down, as we never start wiring on the tip of a branch and we go back. Why? This is physiological for how we wire. When I wire a tree, I always like to set this guy. Okay. So, when I wire a tree, I always like to have the branch that I'm wiring in front of me, never in the side, never in the opposite side, but always facing my branch. So I always have the inside here and the outside here. So I always use my arm in the most comfortable position. Imagine when I have to wire for hours that I have to refine the tree or work a tree. If I work in an uncomfortable position that most of the time is, for example, standing or bending or lifting my shoulders, I will get tired 
pretty fast. But uh, if uh, I always try to wire with the branch more or less at the eye of my chest, from my belly to my chest, let's say this area here, I always relax my arms and I can always, with the rule I just said, from the lower branches up or from inside outside, I can always wire just comfortably and keep wiring my tree and never get tired. So I always, if I don't need wire in this part, I always wire from inside outside. And we go back with the wire to what you have on your side. We don't have any other Okay, so we go back at the sketch uh, that you have uh, there. We wire from the lower branch, uh, anchoring around the trunk once, uh, and going to the other branch. One anchor, the wire out to the two branches. This is very important to understand because uh, these are the base of a correct wiring. As I said, we always wire pulling the wire outside. You see, one hand, I'm right-handed, but doesn't matter. One hand is the, what we call the twister. So it's the wire, is the hand twisting the wire. And one hand is called the holder. So I always have one hand cuddling the wire to be sure that the wire is nice and tight to the branch. And the other hand just keep wiring out to the direction. So this now is my older and this is my twister. So is going back, you see, I pull the wire outside, be sure that the wire stay nice and tight to the branch, creating uh, loops uh, and spacing, and I pull the wire in this direction. It's not natural. Let's go back uh, now. It's absolutely not natural to wire going against the tree. Imagine you have to wire like this. How this is possible? You have to move the wire through and try to go against the wire. And uh, it will be very difficult uh, to anchor properly because we don't have any force pulling the wire against the tree or from the top down. We always have to go again from the lower branches up and from the inner branches out. Second rule, let's go with the third. That's a regular. Here we are with the third rule. This is uh, very easily connectable with the other one. One piece of wire has uh, two ends. What this means? It means that every time we put a piece of wire, we have to connect two branches. Why we want to connect two branches? Because we want to create an anchor. Everything about wiring is about applying a force and also using the wire to suck the tension from the branch. This is the secret we have to balance to be able to bend branches in safety and in the correct way. If we put too much tension in a, in a point of a branch, we break that branch. Having the wire twisting regularly around that branch means that that wire is applying a force that is different, is equally split and go over the different gaps. And in the meantime, while 
we bend the branch, that wire also, apart of holding the fibers together, also absorb the tension from that branch. That's the reason why we always say avoid uh, leaving gaps uh, between the wire and, and the branch. Why? Because if we leave a gap, uh, the wire doesn't touch the branch, and if unluckily we're gonna bend the branch and a lot of tension get, uh, you know, uh, stuck in that portion of the branch and not be able to be absorbed by the wire, that's the point where we break the branch. You can easily try with a normal branch, not a branch from one of your trees, but maybe cut a piece of branch from a tree in the garden and you try. So here, one piece of wire two direction is uh, very important when we do the aim core. If you can read the camera here, for the So I always create my aim core here. I start uh, anchoring uh, up to the stronger part between the two branches here and here. So you anchor. And then you can see the two direction. This is clockwise, so twist to the right like the clock, and this guy here is counter clockwise. So every time I put a piece of wire, I need to be sure that from the anchor to the two direction, to the two branches, the wire goes in two direction. Doesn't matter if uh, now my U is here, and this is clockwise, uh, and this one is counterclockwise, I can easily change uh, the direction in the two branches, just uh, moving uh, the side uh, of my anchor point. Before it was uh, here, if now I start uh, in front uh, and I go anchoring to the trunk and then starting the two branches uh, like this, uh, you will easily see that uh, now this branch is counterclockwise and the upper one uh, is uh, clockwise. Just uh, because uh, I move uh, my anchor from before it was in the back and now it's in the front. And now this is counterclockwise, so left, and this is clockwise, so right. Still good, just necessary different purpose according if I have to wire one of the two clockwise and the other counterclockwise. But now we have to understand how important is always to wire with one piece of wire two branches and the wire has to go into different direction. Let's go with uh, the next uh, sketch. Guys, don't get scared about all these uh, rules. Apart from that, uh, you know, after the uh, demo I will leave uh, in the chat, uh, all these uh, sketches, uh, you can easily download them and then uh, use them as uh, you want. It's my pleasure to share with you, you know, this method. Again, if you are interested, uh, one article of my Bonsai book, you can purchase my Bonsai book, is only about wine, and they are also connected with a QR code on the book uh, to some video online where I explain again all these different techniques. Every time I explain them, I like to put a little different flavor so they all look, uh, you know, I'm talking about the same topic, but just uh, give a different flavor so it doesn't get even, you know, boring for me to repeat, repeat, repeat again, you know. We have to try to create uh, even the artistic part, uh, even in the mathematics of why. So let's go with the next rule. This is a very simple rule. You can see a branch uh, and you can see two things uh, that you always have uh, to be uh, looking for when you wire a branch. So 
Se vuoi venire con la telecamera oppure mi avvicino. So you see it? I said, ok. So, the two secret for the perfect wiring is when I wire, as I said, stay in front of the branch, pull the wire with my twister, and when I wire, I want always to create equal steps. Boom, 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 boom on my weight out and same angle. The angle according to the necessity goes from kind of a more open angle that look open but actually is 45 degrees to 60 degrees angle for a more you know smooth wiring. So also the angle is a part of the pushing we give to the branch. If I need to push more, I'm uh, more open. If I need to push less, uh, I do a more gentle angle. But it's very important for what I said earlier that all the steps uh, has to be the same because uh, we want to be sure to apply the same amount of strength to all the different parts of the branch. And also, because normally we bend the branch generally in one or two points, we want all, always to spread and move the tension from the points where we apply the bend to the other points before and after and having the steps and the angles all the same help us, for what I said before, to move that tension regularly along the spiraling of the wire. This is very, very important. Let's go with the next. Here is what I call... <laughs> one of the most important rules on the wire. So, a lot of people get kind of lost when, you know, they have a branch wired and they have to start with the second wire. But it's always the same idea. Very, very simple. So, remember, now we do a little you know, break it down of all the rules while I do this. So we have the primary wire. This wire is clockwise, so turn to the right. Now we have to put the wire on the secondary branches. We have three secondary branches. Very easy. What we said, we start from inside and we go outside. If you can, se puoi venire con la telecamera da qui, dall'alto, mi amor. Si vede questi punti? Perfect. Allora, very, very easy. So, we always have to start uh, from uh, the inner branch, okay? We always start from what I call the shoulder of the branch and not the armpit. So, this is the armpit, this is the shoulder, okay? Clear. So, now I hold the wire with two hands and my first... Uh, is to follow the main wire. The main wire is uh, clockwise. What clockwise means? Means right. So my right hand follow clockwise and create the anchor. Okay? I go down two steps and I stop. My left arm goes to the branch counterclockwise. Boom, 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 following this line. And the second wire that I anchor clockwise, keep going clockwise in my second branch. Again, I use my rule inside, outside. I use my rule of the anchor. You can see the anchor underneath the branch, the U anchor. And I have wired two branches with one piece of wire. 
and the two branches have different direction of wire. The inner one is counterclockwise, the outside one is clockwise, because the outside one has to follow the wire of transition that we have in the anchor section between the two branches. So you can easily see on that sketch all the different ways how we can wire the branch. So now, for instance, you know, and uh, again, uh, as mathematics, that rule is very easy. So generally, you can see on that rule, if I have a clockwise uh, wire on my main branch and my second, uh, here we are. If you have a clockwise wire on the main line and my inner branch is right, so clockwise right with right branch, the U anchor is uh, under. If uh, I have, uh, let's go here for example, we imagine that my inner branch, uh, forget about this one now and just focus on this and imagine to wire this uh, inside, outside. This is uh, clockwise left, so right to left, the anchor is uh, over. In fact, if this would be my first branch to wire, my U is over the top here. And again, the two branches has a different direction. Still, the inner branch is opposite than the wire leader that is right, so this is left, and the second one goes in the same direction. You have the other part of the sketch. I do the other part now. Very, very easy. It's like mathematics. So let's imagine now we change. This was a wire clockwise. Boom. Now we imagine that this branch is wired counterclockwise. Later we'll, we will see what is the difference before wire, from wiring a branch clockwise or counterclockwise. For now, we just focus on the primary five rules. Here we are. So now the branch is counterclockwise. Perfect. Counterclockwise means left. Easy. It's just a mirror at what we just see for the clockwise. So left counter with the right, right branch. So we all agree that if this is a line, this branch is on the right side and this branch is on the left side. Perfect. So left with right over. In fact, my U anchor is over. Over the top and then, sorry. Let me do a better anchor here we are. Over the top. And then the two direction again. This goes out counterclockwise, and this goes out clockwise. If, for instance, we consider, like before, we forget about this inner branch, and we have the left one as our first inner branch, so forget about this guy, and think about left with left was before right with right under, so the U under the branch. Now left with left is under. In fact, my U anchor, very important, is under the branch. With no crossing, this is another important thing. All my system doesn't think about crossing the wire. Here we are, again, clockwise with counterclockwise. So again, one piece of wire, two direction, and my anchor is underneath the branch. Very simple. Four position, as you can see on the little sketch, just four position of start of my anchor, that are basically two position 
over or under, but they just get mirrored according if uh, the main wire is clockwise or counterclockwise. Very simple. Let's go with the next. Here we are with uh, the next uh, one that is uh, based, uh, actually what I just uh, said. When we decide if we want to wire a branch uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, to decide that uh, we have always to understand that the movement of a branch is never in, this, in one direction. We move a branch uh, twisting the branch in the direction we want for two reasons because twisting the fibers of the wood is the best way to move the tension along the fibers if we imagine to move the branches in one direction again we uh, compress the tension in one point and it's easier to risk to break the branch. But if we imagine to twist the branch in the direction, even twisting up or twisting down, the tension can move along the fibers and we don't risk to break longitudinally the branches. But eventually, we just split some fibers and splitting them, they can just flow one to the other, and then they reheal easy because we don't affect the, the vascular system that goes uh, from the lower to the upper tip. And uh, the second point is uh, that we wire, twisting the wire. We're not placing the wire against the branch and try to push, but uh, we just wire with this movement that is uh, creating a spring. So, sprinting the wire to the branch, we imagine the movement. That's the reason we have this sketch. I only use this sketch about the direction when I wire primary branches, because uh, is when I have to use uh, the bigger gauge, and I have to do the most uh, movement. I do doesn't matter to me if a secondary branch or a tertiary branch is a clockwise or counterclockwise because anyway I can always put them in position. But when I have to bend uh, thick branches or when I have to do heavy work to you know to bend a trunk or a thick branch, I always have to be sure that the wire twist in the opposite direction when I want to move the branch for the thing of the twisting I said. So, if we look at this branch now and we look at the wire that is counterclockwise, so twist to the left, actually this is the wire to move the branch to the right because we twist the branch in the position. Boom! If we wire a branch, let's go this, we wire a branch clockwise, let me take away this guy here. If we wire a branch clockwise, you see clockwise twist to the right, but move the branch to the left. Because we imagine the movement make the wire to tight to the branch. The other important thing I already said when I was talking about twisting. We always have to be sure that our wire is nice and tight to the branch. So when we move the branch, the wire tends to tighten it up. Especially important in the thicker branches where we apply the stronger force to the stronger movement. We don't want to wire a branch, a thick branch, counterclockwise, and then move the branch left because we risk that the wire will open, create those bad gaps, and then we risk that the branch will break in some of those spots. This is very important. Now let's go to 
one of the two final rows. So here we are. So again, uh, as uh, I said, so again, uh, as I said, uh, I like to consider my tree, you know, when I play with my wiring, I like to consider my tree like a system. So how is a system? A system is, uh, you know, made by a lot of smaller systems. So if I imagine this, uh, or actually you have a branch, uh, you imagine your branch like a system, you have uh, the primary wire, so primary branch, primary wire, then you have the secondary wire, that is uh, the one connecting two by two the secondary branches, always inside, outside. And then uh, you have a smaller wire working in the little systems. That one is this, one is this, one is this. So primary system, secondary systems, one, two, three, and then smaller, smaller systems. So every time we imagine to down gauge our wire from inside, outside, primary, secondary, tertiary, and smaller and smaller again, we downsize according to the system using those rules inside, outside, and we wire those system connecting two by two together. You can see easily, and now we go to the upload on that rule in the next, next sketch. You see a more complex system that is done. It, it, will, be, it will be easier when you will see later on and you will think about. So you see we have two branches. Those two branches are wired together. So there is a main wire connecting the two branches. And then downsizing everything, we go downsize, arriving to the little tips with the smaller wire. We don't want to use big gauge all over and then create a bad connection. No, always thinking inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, and moving out step by step steps, connecting my systems from inside to the outside. Very, very simple. So at this point, guys, let me see if there is any question. We do a little break for questions, and then we keep going with this code. Yeah, we see some more. Ciao, ciao, ciao. You have a window with a lot of light. Could you close a little to appreciate the details? Ah, it's a problem. It's a problem. It's a bit of a system. There is any. Sì, se ci sono question, c'è qualche, uh, qualche domanda, tiene alcuna pregunta, tu hai alcune question, <laughs> any language guys, no problem. If, if, if you know, for me it's easy to, to speak in English, to be able to, you know, reach a, a bigger audience, if uh, there is something that you haven't understand, I can try to explain again, in, in your language, if uh, it's according to one of the languages I know, so Spanish, English, Italian, French, eventually, Portuguese, eventually. So uh, you let me know. On this picture, I have a question. Okay, Timo, tell me your question, Timo. You have a will. I'm waiting your question, Tim. So also, if you guys have any other question, let me know. Qual è il prossimo? Quello lì è il prossimo, ok. Adesso, allora, bisogna aspettare che devo... So, you know, the first, you know, it's like everything. The first time you get these rules, I see that on this chat there are some of my students already or people that watch my video. Uh, if you want to see more about wiring, a part which is in my book, also if you go on my YouTube channel, there are a couple of videos about wiring where again I explain and I show in detail these rules. 
the, most of the those videos are partial. It's not like complete like this class we do today. Ethne, uh, how you decide that if you start the anchor above or be below an horizontal branch? So, uh, times. Uh, on the main branch, uh, the thing is I always start under the branch. I never start my anchor above the branch. Is wrong what uh, the original old bonsai book said uh, that if you want to push a branch down, you have to start the wire on top of the branch. Because that rule doesn't think about the twist that I said. On, on the old time, it was only about the direction. So I always said, if this branch... If this branch has to go down, you have to start on top. This is wrong. First of all, because uh, this uh, is the point uh, where you want to apply the extension of the fiber to go down. If you put your wire here, you hold the fibers. So this is the thing, you see? Second, if uh, you start on top and then you go to the next branch, uh, this part is all the same direction. The branch is counterclockwise and this section is counterclockwise. And is not an effective anchor. Second, it's not true that this is the point. This is the point here when I want to start, uh, when I push down the branch for the twisting rule. So my U anchor can only start in this side, here, you see, and then clockwise here, and counterclockwise up, but is an effective anchor. You can see how the anchor is nice and tight and the connection. And then this is a clockwise, so I think that this branch has to go left. And when I wire, I push down the branch, I leave uh, this uh, section so I have support underneath the branch. Uh, that is the part uh, I'm, I don't want to break because it's the part from where the sap comes to the branch. The sap always comes to the branch from here, not from here. So this is a part that eventually can also detach. You see also in nature branches uh, that lose the connection with the upper part, but they are still alive because the sap comes from here. And those branches, those fibers uh, are the fibers when I want to apply the extension to move down the branch. Okay? This is uh, the reply to your question. <laughs> On the right, there are three red wires. Okay. Puoi andare indietro sullo schema, l'ultimo schema? L'ultimo, 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 l'ambrado, sì, eccolo qua. Che io non lo vedo, scusa, eh. Me lo devo vedere qui. So, Timo is asking why in this uh, there are three red on the... Ah, ok. So, because uh, we have uh, three branches, Timo, obviously, one of the three branches has to be just re anchor in one of the previous two. So we consider, you see on the central part that it's kind of a double red, that is the anchor to finish the red line. You know, sometimes the system is not perfect. What means? You know, the, the, the rule of the two you know, like here, for example, now we go for Timo. Timo said, okay, I have my primary wire, okay, this is, this goes here. And then we have, uh, here we are. 
And then we have uh, three secondary branches. There are no four. So how I write them? How I wire them? Easy. Let me take a piece of wire and I can show you. Uh, okay. So, as I said, start from the inside, go outside. My wire is here. So, you see my anchor is short. So, what I have to do is this. I start from inside. You get it? So, this is the first wire. I go from this branch and I can go to this one, for example. And then, uh, as the example, if I have this uh, guy left, uh, in the example, I have just to re anchor here in the base of the inner branch that become my second branch and I finish the line out here. This is uh, the sketch that you see there. The black uh, is like your uh, red. If uh, I want to make the rule perfect, uh, I can do this. When I wire a branch, uh, it's like playing uh, a chess game. What means? As much uh, as I can think forward on the next wire I will put on my branch, better and more effective will be my wire. So, if I wire a branch and I make the statement that I short the wire before a junction, this statement, if I want to keep go with my two and two, so one piece of wire, two branches, so I will have to wire for sure this branch and this one, and then this one and this one. Because if I wire these two, and then I wire these two, so let me make uh, that these two are wired, and then I have to wire the second two here, I create uh, a problem. What is the problem? The problem is uh, I don't have a connection between the primary wire and the secondary wire. So when I move this branch, uh, the tension is not able to be stabilized uh, by the main wire. That, that's the reason why I always need uh, to run uh, if a piece of wire always after a junction, so it can become my anchor point. This is very important. So, for example, let me have this uh, correct now, so you can see. I just give a little bit more length to this wire, so I can reach at least one step we are. Go out here. And I can reach out. And now it works because we are here. You can see I have my wire, the structural going here and then my two branches and obviously now for the nice uh, work uh, we have also i want to show you also the other two wired uh, tum, 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 tum. and here underneath uh, tum, 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 tum. and also my other two are wired so again uh, primary secondary, 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 two by two, they are wired. And again, I start solving my system. Now I have just to work on the secondary system to finish up with the small wire.
There is any other question, mi amor? ¿Es el mejor alambrar completo el árbol y luego mover las ramas o se va haciendo todo al mismo tiempo? Ok, very good question, uh, Diego. So Diego is asking if we prefer to wire the entire tree and then do the styling or style while we wire. So, we have to decide the strategy on our wiring according to the type of work we are doing. Generally, I do this. If I have to do a technical work like a first styling with a lot of bending, I always prefer to wire everything and then style the tree. Or if I have to do a lot of bending, I generally wire the primary branches and you know shape them in position or compress the tree in position. And then when the structure is in position, I wire all the fine branches and I move them in position. Or if I have to do a refinement, for example, I have my mature tree, we will see later, I have some example, but Diego made the question, so I'm pretty glad to talk about that. Uh, when I have to you know, bring uh, one of my trees to a show, I have to do a little fine wiring uh, setting, a uh, little cleaning uh, to have everything nice and perfect. So what I do is uh, just uh, sit my tree in the table, wire and refine uh, the lower branch, uh, and then spiraling, uh, going around the tree until everything is rewired and refined to the top. But obviously, if I have to do a lot of work and I work, you know, a branch and I set everything and then I have to work a lot and bend a lot on the top, this will denage my work I did earlier. So that's the reason, according to the amount of work, I decide if I want to use one or the other technique. Either one is good. That is not you know, you have to wire the entire tree and then style, or you have to style while you wire, doesn't matter. The one is more according to the type of work you are doing. Any other questions? Okay, so as you see, the last wire was just anchor to the base of the of the of this branch and go out just on a single line. So even if it was just a single wire, I was you know using an inner branch as my second branch, even if this branch was already wired. But if I have to do it, I can do it. It's not a problem, as I just explained here. Obviously, as much as we are able to think forward on, on our wiring, and this will also go to the exact point where we put our stepping. For example, is a big difference to put one loop before or after a branch, because this will make the changing our way how we arrive or how we start from that branch. Think about it. How you did divide the upper red branch on the right? So the branch of the right is the same question of Timo that you see you see them from the direction. You see, first of all, you wire the two one where one goes clockwise and the second counter, and then you you have the one, let's say, alone, this is just anchored back, that has its own direction. More questions. Great so far. Great so far. Uh, the diagrams are great for beginners. Uh, wiring very clear. Okay. Hola Mauro. Es un diagrama de alambrado. Podría ayuntarlo luego para guardarlos como una guía. Muchas gracias. Fami capire meglio la cuestione del ancoraggio a U. Da sopra da sotto il ramo in relazione al senso del filo primario. Okay. Okay. So, Arsenio is asking a question in Italian. I already talked about this, but I will give Arsenio. Let's go back to the anchor one. Let me see. Provo a farmi vedere la. Dove va questo step? Vediamo. No? No, dopo, dopo. È dopo. Dopo. Questa. Ok. So. 
Just for two minutes, I will talk in Italian so my friend Arsenio from Campania will understand. Allora, Arsenio, il trucco è sempre sapere che se il filo principale è in una direzione e il ramo, primo ramo, è nella stessa direzione del filo, l'ancoraggio è sempre sotto. Se invece il filo principale è nella direzione e il ramo è dall'altro lato e devo partire, quindi sono opposti, l'ancoraggio è sopra. E lì, nello schema che io vi ho allegato, hai, dopo ve li potete tirare giù, questi schemi non è un problema, lì hai quattro sistemi, che in realtà sono gli stessi due, ma invertiti. Guarda, te lo faccio vedere qui. Filo orario, quindi gira a destra, ramo destro, l'ancoraggio è sotto. Filo orario, ramo a sinistra, l'ancoraggio è sopra. Questi sono i due che servono, li hai nello schema del filo orario, ancoraggio destro, o eh, scusami, ramo destro o ramo sinistro. La stessa cosa succede, immagina se giro. Ce l'ho invertito. Il filo è sempre orario, ma il ramo adesso è a sinistra. Infatti, destra con sinistra, sopra, quello che prima era qui, adesso lo abbiamo qui, e qui abbiamo destra, con destra, sotto, infatti la U è sotto. È solo specchiato, facilissimo. Bene. Let's go with the next question. Ancora domande, amore? 20 minuti. Fammi capire, perfetto, thank you. Ok, very good. So, now, before we step to the next level, we're gonna finish wiring this branch. So, I take the wire, we take uh, the camera and uh, we go through and see. Allora, vieni da sopra e facciamo vedere. Voglio prendi la telecamerina. So now that I have the primary and the secondary wire on the branch, ho oh, bisogno che vieni da sopra. Prendi la telecamera e metti da sopra. Sì, perché devono vedere. Se ne l'hanno chiamato. Vediamo. No, no, così. Io qui ho. Vuoi tenerla così, per favore? Vuoi tenerla così, per favore? Eccoci qua. Ora siamo qui. Benissimo. Questo adesso, adesso avendo questo filo che è diventato il nostro filo principale, come prima per il sistema generale lo era questo, adesso abbiamo questo filo qui. Bene. No, no, si vede bene, amore. Tranquilla per la luce. Adesso abbiamo questo filo qui. Questo è il nostro sistema e questo è il nostro ramo interno. Io non ho bisogno più di legare questo... Oh, sorry guys, I'm talking in Italian. I switch. So guys, sorry. As we go back for English. <laughs> my brain was crazy. So, as before, my primary wire was this one going out to my main system. Now I have this wire that is dividing this is a secondary system from the main one. I don't have to go anymore back to the main system because I have already my wire here. So I just uh, use my rule inside, outside. So, as you can see, I point uh, here, perfect. So, again, uh, this black wire is counterclockwise, so left. Uh, left branch, so left with left, the anchor is under. In fact, I anchor here, I come out to my next branch, and then I go to this guy here. Cut, cut, and these two branches are wired. Again, one piece of wire, two branches, you anchor under here because my inner branch was left connected to a line wired counterclockwise and I have my piece of wire with two directions clockwise here counterclockwise here let's finish this branch so now that I have this wire here my system is again subdivided in another one 
and two. So I still have these two little guys to wire. I don't wire them together because they belong to two different systems. I just use again the rule inside outside. Again, clockwise right under, boom, anchor, goes to the branch, back, connection underneath, wire out, and the same I do here, this branch outside here. So I never have more than one wire to the primary branches, and I always have just the wire to reconnect in the secondary. So I never overwire a branch, and overwiring is very bad because it gives too much stress to the branches. We go to the next one, is this guy here, we just have this, easy, again, under, because he's a right branch on, sorry, on a clockwise wire, we go here, and now, we finish this guy, same, inside, outside, boom, tack, and these two are done. Even uh, when I have a branch, I never go back. Never. You see? Primary wire, secondary, tertiary, and smaller. And then we do the last one here. Anchor here. And go out uh, to the little branch. And also this section is done. Just one little piece left for this branch. I have, I have my anchor here. And so, this and this done. Just the right amount of wire. Let me see. Here we are. Primary, secondary, tertiary, inside out, inside out, inside out, and all the branch is wired. So easily we wire all the branch. Now, system wise, this uh, like uh, my sketches uh, on uh, the uh, computer are like a uh, system based on a kind of a perfect uh, ideal branch. This is uh, a perfect ideal branch. The line uh, is evidently the primary line, the second of branches, the third pair. Sometimes uh, when we style the tree, and especially if we style the tree for the first time, uh, we don't have such a perfect structure to wire. But if uh, we always refer to the system idea and the divisions of uh, subsystem connecting always a two by two, we are able to solve a very complex bonsai tree that has branches all over, as secondary, tertiary branches all over, breaking down that system in smaller perfect systems. It's like, again, and I refer to mathematics, it's like when in mathematics we have a very complex function. Functional, functional, functional. What we have to do? Just break down in pieces, solve those pieces by themselves, and then you will have the perfect complex system solved. This is the same as wiring. Let's go with the other work here. I want to present uh, some example. So this is the first uh, example. We said uh, already that uh, uh, you know wiring uh, is also according uh, to the type uh, of work uh, we want to do. So this is a first uh, styling uh, on a Scott spine I collected uh, in France, uh, and then uh, I uh, had to do the first uh, basic styling. You see the tree, you know, in the left, uh, you see the tree before, 
Then you have the second picture that is, uh, you know, again, we go, the decision was to wire and prepare all the tree. So you see the tree completely wired uh, using all uh, the rules uh, of the directions and sizes uh, we need uh, to use uh, to put the tree in position. And then uh, you have uh, the final picture with all uh, the branches uh, set, uh, you know. So the main branch was wired uh, clockwise to go down and create uh, that nice uh, right pad and uh, consequentially everything was wired. We have always to say, and I repeat again, that the question of the direction, right, uh, move the branch to the left, right and left, move the branch to the, the right, is always only about main branches. Now we we'll go for the next uh, example. This is actually one work uh, uh, I did uh, recently, I did uh, maybe 10 days ago. That uh, taxus uh, is a taxus uh, um, cuspidata variety from uh, uh, Nigata. So it's a kind of a thin variety of taxus. So this was a refinement. I just let the tree grow last year to build the more foliage. And then uh, I start uh, creating the pads uh, while I was wiring the tree. So this will go again back to the question of, I think, Alejandro that was asking the type of work. So on this tree, I didn't have to do a lot of structural work. It was more pushing the branches down and opening the pad. You can see the picture before. Then the second picture is uh, already some pads uh, that were put in position. And now we go with the next uh, picture. Gracias, amor. And now you see exactly the transition from when the tree was half done. So I was wiring the branches, setting the pads, pruning and positioning and working my way up until I reach the top and I define the top of the tree. So generally when I do this type of work, I use, for example, on these two last works, uh, I was using only copper wire. Another thing, I never mix uh, copper and aluminium together. Never, ever. If I wire copper, I only use copper. If I wire aluminium, I only use aluminium. So now we go with the next uh, example. So talking about the refinement, here you can see you know, some example of uh, refinement uh, that uh, I did uh, on my trees and you see the level of uh, complexity that you can reach uh, with the wire. This is just a basic wiring. But imagine when you have a tree with hundreds uh, of uh, branches. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, the one I, 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 I show you uh, earlier was basic wiring, just a tree with a few branches. But like uh, on this picture, you can see how many branches uh, that the tree can have uh, while uh, they are maturing. So you can see the complexity of the wiring. It's not uh, difficult in terms uh, of appliance, uh, applying a lot of different gauges of wire, but it becomes difficult uh, in order to not overwire the tree because you have so many branches of the same size that you have always to find a good way to re-anchoring and be able to not overwire the tree. You can see this is a Nugo Pine Pumilia that is in my uh, collection for 15 years now. It, it reached, uh, I think, uh, the, the higher level of uh, maturity for this type of mugo, very good uh, small foliage, a lot of branches, a uh, lot of fine branches, but again, uh, is a lot of work uh, every time uh, we have to, you know, set uh, the tree for a show when we want to, you know, show the geometry of the paths and everything. You know, wiring is also, we can go back to my image, wiring is also a tool we can use uh, to express uh, our creativity not only in terms of uh, basic styling, 
but also when we refine a tree in the way we wire the tree, we can decide how much wire we want to put on the tree and how much level of refinement we want to give to that piece of art. You know, if the idea is that the tree has to look as more natural as possible, the rule less is more is the main best rule. So we go back to the bigger uh, discussion about wire. Wire is so important on a bonsai that we have in time to reach the point that the tree doesn't need wire. We start uh, with a lot of wire, a lot of thick wire, and then we have to understand the process that is uh, every time we rework that tree, we have to be able to put less wire, especially less thick wire as possible. And while the tree matures, so the tree will produce more fine branches, eventually we wire those fine branches. So we go down in gauge and we increase the number of the little branches we wire, bringing the tree to the maturity and reaching a point, especially for the deciduous tree, when we show a deciduous tree without any wire. Most of the time, I have to say, and even in the highest uh, competition in the work in the world uh, that is Kokufu, most of the time I see conifers with a little bit of wire because uh, you want to put in position some branches in the way you want. You don't want to leave the tree as free as possible. So. Uh, showing trees with wire is not a problem, but obviously the wire has just to do the little necessary to increase the uh, beautiful aesthetic of that tree. Let's go with the next. Ah, there is a question, Professor. Okay. To remove the wire, what do you recommend? Cut or unwire? What's better for the tree? This is a very good question. I was going, uh, I, I was, uh, I was going through that question at the end, and actually, I, I had, uh, I had this example. So, you see, this a little uh, juniper. Actually, is my wife uh, tree. She did a, a, her first bonsai class uh, with one of my students, and she worked uh, on this juniper. And now, actually, it's time to rewire the tree. So this tree was wired probably two years ago, and then uh, you know they they bend drastically the apex of the tree down, and then uh, you know in order to on conifers, in order to set the branches in position, we allowed the wire to bite in a little bit. So I always say, on conifer, don't, it's not a problem when the wire bite in, because in one or two seasons, these uh, wire marks, uh, they will disappear. On a deciduous tree, Never allow the wire to bite in, otherwise you will see those uh, scars uh, forever. So this is very different for the two things. Then, about the question of uh, Rosmarinus, uh, about the question about when and how remove the wire, I normally cut uh, the wire if uh, the tree is wired with copper, and I unwire aluminum if the wire, if the tree is wired with aluminum. It's very easy to unwire aluminum. Eventually, if I need, I can cut aluminum away very easily. Again, tum, tum, tum. But you know, aluminum is always flexible, so it's no problem to un un unwire. Copper, the uh, the thing of copper that I forgot to say before is, uh, probably you guys know, when copper is new, it's flexible because it's annealed. As soon as you apply to the branch, uh, and so the particle of copper 
will a little bit uh, eat up uh, they fix the position. So especially thick copper, as soon as it's on the branch, is very, very stiff. That's the reason why we use it for, you know, doing big bending because they go in position and they set the position. If we do big bending uh, with aluminum, uh, aluminum is always flexible. So we have to reinforce uh, with guy wire. Or for example, if I wire a spruce with aluminum, the branches of the spruce are so strong that after a year, if I don't prune the tree, they will tend to regrow up. No, no, déjala ahí, déjala ahí. Ah, no, 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 dame la, dame la lámpara. Esto les sirve para enseñar. When you use a very thick, this is a thick copper. You see, this is never used before, but if I twist the tree, it will be almost impossible to reopen effectively. You see, I will, you know, the part that absorbed the most tension tend to stay and fix in position. So this wire now is unuseful. This part is unuseful because it will be too stiff to apply to a branch. Any other question? Maybe I'll. How do you finish the ligature at the end of the branches of pinus and junipers is the same. Okay, very good question. So, on the pines and the juniper, or in general, you know, we can uh, divide uh, our type of tree from trees that have green inside uh, all the way, or trees that has only flesh uh, in the outside, for example. Uh, generally, a pine always have only the flesh in the tips uh, or the inner part as uh, little branches with flesh, with flesh. So what I do, I always do a little loop under and I go back. This loop, uh, here we are, let's show you from close by, perfecto. This loop uh, with the flesh inside here, I can always manage to move it so I can uh, create the direction of my flesh. This uh, is uh, in general for pines and junipers, especially when also juniper with maturity, they start having only green in the tips uh, because they mature. In general, for all the other trees, uh, I just finish my wire flat. You can see here, on the branch, I generally finish flash, flat, uh, and uh, let me see here, here, and I always cut my wire on top, uh, and I leave uh, this free. And I imagine that, for example, if this is a taxus here, all the inside, I have little green. Uh, so I don't do the loop because I don't need also to lift up the final of the pad. Uh, Lord, the same I do on large, the same I do on the cedars in general, even if I put branches up, but I don't have a foliage to hold. In pines, uh, if I don't do that loop, that uh, final flash will always flop, uh, and especially if I want to do a nice refinement, and uh, as the one you saw on the uh, Mugo, I need to be able to position perfectly every single flash, uh, so all the flash look at the same direction. I don't uh, create a pad where the flash, they go against one to the other. And the question? Perfect. Well, let's go with the next uh, worker. This is a tree some of you already see. Maybe it's a tree from my collection for many, many years. Uh, you see the picture on the evolution of the tree and again I, want, I wanted to show you this work and talk to you about all the phases we have to go through. We said that the wiring is our you know, way to style a tree. On this tree you can see the tree from raw material, then the tree when I did the first bending and set the position, so I did the heavy bending. So every time I was able, as I said before, to remove 
part of the thick wire because the priority when we wire a tree is to set the first the primary structure, then the secondary, and then slowly mature the fine branches so we can every time wire less. You can see in the next, next image is the transition between the second step and the maturing of the tree. And then we can go on the final image that you will see just in a second. We'll put in the prossima image appena poi. And you see now the tree in this uh, image when I have only wire in the fine branches to define all the pads and I don't need any wire for the other part of the tree. This is the typical example on the evolution of a material, actually, you know, from that first picture when the tree was a material to this final picture it's been 20 years. So that tree was collected 20 years ago and now finally start. Uh, not every tree has uh, the same speed. This, is, this was uh, one of my toughest uh, uh, job. The tree was very old, didn't grow too much. It was very long, so I have to bend a lot of the branches in order to create the shape. Finally, now start the tree to be nice and mature. Also, in the year, uh, I was able to, pro to you know, create more roots so the tree got stronger. But obviously, it's not, uh, it's not easy. It's not easy to, you know, ma manipulate the tree and along the year show the result. And we can go to another one. This is another Scott pine. It's my favorite uh, one of my favorite trees. I collected this tree in 2016, so it had a pretty fast evolution. You see here the picture when I collected the tree, and then you can see the tree now. This is the actual image on the same tree, only six years, basically six seasons, five years from the collection. So. Obviously, it differently from the other Scots, uh, the tree matured very well. So, good wiring uh, has always uh, to be in uh, set uh, with uh, good uh, cultivation and good knowledge uh, on, uh, you know, either agricultural and growing techniques uh, and uh, technical techniques, uh, technical to you know, style our trees and have uh, the perfect result. Because obviously, if we wire a tree and then we let the tree just grow and we forget about it, uh, the wire will bite in, the branches will start getting weak. I said it's no problem on conifer if the wire bites, but if it bites too much, we risk to damage severely the branches. So rather than have the branch setting in position, the, the, the branch get weaker. So it's always a balance of agriculture and technique that we bring our tree to the next level. So there is any other question, guys? Perfect. Something I want to show you, uh, I want to take some time to show you little uh, uh, tricks. Uh. So, for example, uh, going back to the hands, uh, one very important part uh, of the wiring is your wrist. Always, uh, as I said, stand uh, with this part of uh, your shoulder still but always use your forearm and a lot your wrist. So, ima sorry, image that your wire is a whip. When you wire and you apply the wire, you use your wrist as you want to whip the wire to the branch. This will always help you to be nice and tight. So, if this movement, especially when you go down and you give a little click to the wire, 
you apply the correct tension that from the start of the wire is always the same on the way out. You apply the correct tension and then you use your wrist, you will always have your wire nice and tight. If this section of your arm from your, uh, your hand down to your forearm is just static, not dynamic, your wire will lose strength and will stay loose on the branch. So remember that. Then, another little trick. trick. When uh, we have, uh, let me do it here, let me find a nice perfect here, for example. Abbiamo bisogno della telecamera vicina. Riesco a tenerlo posato e nel stesso tempo. So, sometimes happen that uh, we have uh, a short uh, anchor like this one and then two branches. The trick uh, to avoid this, so to help this, is uh, in this case uh, to overlap the wire on the anchor. So overlapping here will create uh, the connection between the new wire, let me see if I can move this one here, yeah. the new wire and the old one. My advice is always to try to go at least one or to spiral to one of the two, but sometimes you arrive short, so this is a saving. Or we can see another example here. Let me take it out, this wire. Let me put a little bit better this section. Sometimes, uh, sometimes we have a thick wire ending on a branch, and then we have to reconnect uh, here. So my advice uh, is always, in this case, uh, the anchor is under. I overlap again on top of the end of that wire, and then I wire my branch. You can see the overlap here. That help me to connect the two wire and stabilize the tension, always having my U anchor and then the anchor between the two wires. I only do this, so this cross, we can call it cross. I only do this cross in the final part of the thick wire when I arrive with a thin wire. I do the same also arriving out. So for example, we can see another example here. Questo punto. When uh, I wire out from this branch to this line, I loop and I anchor the fine wire on top uh, of the big one. Again, just in this last part. So this will create a good connection between the right. It's the only time, let's say, when crossing is allowed. Not any other crossing has to occur on the wiring, only for anchoring the final part of the thick wire with the next transition on the small one. There is a question. Vediamo se qualche domanda. Qualche domanda? Any question? Any question? Any buona pregunta? Amigos, everything was clear. I hope it was, uh, it was uh, a good lesson. I know for sure that uh, already some of you has uh, my bonsai book. And again, uh, on that book, uh, you have uh, an entire article with all these rules, tricks, and tips uh, to make your wiring better. Remember, 
The best advice I can give you is not to overwire your tree. If you are not safe on your wiring, better to use some guy wire to move branches rather than overwire branches in a wrong way and damage those branches that slowly they will lose power and die or risk to break them because the wire is not properly positioned on the branches. If uh, you, you don't do, you, you are not a follower on my YouTube channel, you can go on my YouTube channel and uh, write uh, on search wiring class. There is an interesting video on me wiring a larch, very easy species because uh, in winter it's like a deciduous tree, very easy to wire, very flexible, very easy to give advices uh, on wiring and again Tonight, I decided to use uh, this uh, dummy tree like my example to show you all uh, the rules. Uh, but again, uh, is uh, when uh, you try, try to, you know, get those uh, five uh, sim simple rules and every time you find a problem uh, on your wiring uh, because some branches are in the, you know, wrong position, you solve that problem by using one of those rules uh, that will help you to increase uh, your wiring skill. This is a uh, good advice I can give you. Where do you hold the uh, bench, branch when you bend it? Is there a trick? Okay. So, when I hold the branch, when I bend it. So generally, if I uh, move uh, primary branches, one of my hand, uh, is always uh, under the branch. I said already that this point is uh, my golden point. I don't want to break this point. If the branch open a little bit on top, no problem. But if I break here, bye-bye, game over. So I always hold the branch here, one finger under the branch, and then with the other hand, my thumb, is on top of the branch and uh, using the direction of the wire, so this again clockwise, so the branch going this uh, in that direction, I move and push the branch down. When I work with bigger branch, I always try to use uh, my both hands and twist uh, the branch in the position. Sometime I also make my forearms to touch the branch so I have the best sensibility and the best push I can. Always bend branches using all your fingers, your both hands and your fingers, because give and have the good sensibility and the good twist will help you to preserve the fibers of the branch. Any other question? Tensor, one of two wire, what do you think? Okay, I always uh, like to do guy wire double. So I always like to, first of all, anchor into a gap of the wire or on top of the wire. Never, si vede? Secondo te, mettimi l'immagine intera, per favore. Esatto. Always, if I go on top of the branch, like this, I always push against the wire. I never push here against the branch. Or I create, I pull the gap, the wire, so I lose it a little bit. And then I always like to do a double wire down, so I can be able to secure it, because most of the time I work by myself. So imagine when I have to bend the branch, boom, I'm here, bending the branch, and in the meantime I have to secure the guy wire, having this double is easier than have just a single line, and then I have to bend, and then, and then if it's not enough, I have to unwire, rebend. So it's always, I always like, I, I, 
advise you to go on my YouTube channel and look at the last video that was actually a technical video on bending a larch. And on that video, a lot of interest uh, I put uh, on the way of wiring and the way of bending using different anchor points. So this is uh, interesting for you and for you, all of you, but especially you who made this question. Any other question? ¿Cómo escoger las dos ramas primarias para alambrar con el mismo alambre? Si tengo un tronco con muchas ramas primarias cercanas para que no eh, quede con mucho alambre. Okay, so the idea is always uh, that when we style a tree, and I'm your tree now. The lower branches, the two lower branches, always have to come forward. So generally my advice is always try to wire the two lower branches together because you will be sure that one has to be wired counterclockwise and the other one clockwise because the movement will be this. So anchor to the main trunk as we did here at least one and then wire the two branches clockwise it's not a problem when you have a big trunk that you have just one loop around the trunk even not one twist but just one loop going to the branch because on the length of that loop you have enough holding of strength you don't have to rewire and rewire around and then risk. So always try to match two branches that has to be moved in the two opposite directions. So you know one has to be wired clockwise, the other one counterclockwise. And then slowly from the lower branches you go up to the top. It's hard to find question. <laughs> I have been using the wiring system for about a year now and evolved to a point I did not think to, to be at this fast. Dave, uh, yeah, that's, that's great. Apart, <laughs> apart the thing of the question, but I'm very happy that uh, you are practicing on that, uh, on my wiring system. Actually, you know, a lot of people say is my wiring system. I just, uh, did something easy that was uh, try to get all the different rules of wiring, simplify them and then put on paper to be able to, you know, I did it for my interest uh, because this uh, made my teaching easier. But I'm glad, that, you know, the good thing is when you don't have to think. When I work a tree, I don't think it comes naturally. It's like riding a bicycle. I don't, or, you know, people, you know, this is funny. People come to my workshop and they say, I don't know how to wire. I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I don't know how to wire. So I say, how can we? It's so easy. Do you know how, how you came to the workshop? What do you mean? From your house to the workshop, how you came here? Ah, I took my car and I came. So driving a car is much complicated than wiring a tree. When I drive the car, I have three pedals, I have the stair wheel, I have to change to shift, and then I have to watch. It's more complicated. Wiring is easy. It's just one piece of wire, two branches, every time, inside, outside. Easy. Boom, boom, boom. I always repeat that, and people joke on me. Same. Question, do you want to practice on any of my trees? Okay, by me. <laughs> Simon, any time, if I can travel to UK, I will be more than happy to practice on uh, your trees. Or, you know, you have trees here, I can practice on uh, your trees you have here. <laughs> Sulla pianta, quali sono le differenze tra la fifonia, pini e ginetto? Okay. So Mirano is asking how long the wire has to stay on a tree. So, as I said, even from the same species, it depends. It depends on the strength of the tree, it depends on the type of work we did. 
I have some of my finished trees, uh, mature trees, they have a small wire on for the last four or five years. The branches don't grow because the tree is so mature, the energy is very well distributed. They can stay wired a long time. But when I style a tree for the first time and I do heavy bending, where I do heavy bending, that wire will be the first one biting in. I will have to take care and look. I said, I want to let the wire on conifer to bite in a little bit because I know that as much as it bites, in a good way, the branch stays in position. On the, on the cedar tree, as soon as I feel the wire is a little bit tighter to the branch, I have to remove. Otherwise, I risk to sign the branch and it will be very bad. So, we always have to have a look at the tree. And then, always remember, during the year, the tree have waves of growth. They grow a lot in spring, then they go down in summer, there is no growth, and then there is another big wave of growth in autumn. So those uh, part of the years are the parts when we have to be more careful of the trees uh, and check uh, if the wire is biting you or not, and eventually remove it. Practice, practice, practice. The simplicity and minimalism of it makes the difference, yes, no overthinking. They are with you. <laughs> what thickness you normally use for guy wire, aluminum and copper? So, even when I wire with aluminum, my guy wires are always in copper. It's the only thing I use in copper when I go aluminum. I don't rely to aluminum guy wire because especially Thin aluminium is very weak. Copper is stronger. And then is according to the strength I give to the branches. Normal guy wire. So if I have to show a tree to a show, I use a 0.5 just to move some little branch and then it disappear. Even more, if I have a guy wire on a tree on the show, I paint a line so for on the on the wire so it become black. If uh, I have some heavy bending to do and then I have to hold a lot of tension, you can see on my on the video of the large on my YouTube channel, I was using number two, one and a half, it depends. Obviously, I don't uh, use guy wire number three, number three and a half because it will be too difficult to tighten it down. But sometimes I have to use number two for Thick, uh, heavy bending. Hi. Great info, Mauro. As you said, most people are afraid of wire, just need to take the first step. When is the best time to wire a tree? Mauro, thank you for this mastercard. Great info from our Netherlands. Stay safe, Roy. Thank you so much, Roy. So, uh, basically, you know, I'm a professional and more or less uh, I work uh, my trees or my trees. You know, my student tree, my client tree, my trees, all over the year. If we have to do a first styling, it is better to do in the window between autumn and spring. Because it's the fresher period, if we give a stress to the tree, you know, even in winter it's important to protect the tree in the greenhouse, there is no degradation. But obviously, I don't do first styling in July or, you know, in the hottest period of the year. There is too much degradation. But in July, for example, I defoliate and wire the cedar tree. I refine trees. It's not a problem. In late spring, I do a lot of first styling because the tree is pushing. So, we need always to set the type of work we are doing or we want to do according to the different season of the year. Hottest, what I say, hottest season, no big work, no much manipulation. Refinement, some work, general work, okay. Winter, autumn, winter, spring, good for first styling. If we bend a lot the tree, if you don't have a greenhouse, 
better to do at the end of winter because the tree will start pushing straight away. Imagine to give too much stress to a tree in autumn and then the tree has to be dormant and stay in cold for all winter. If you delay too much some fibers, they will die. And for question, guys, uh, at the end of the story, I think uh, it's been two hours uh, of uh, full uh, intensive of wiring. I hope uh, you enjoy this class. I hope uh, you have more questions. In case you have more questions, just write to me in the next few days. If you want more information about my book, uh, don't hesitate uh, and write to me. And uh, stay safe, enjoy bonsai, and uh, follow Bonsai Dream. Thank you so much.